Hi, I'm Joan Rivers, and don't go anywhere because Profile is coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is comedy legend Joan Rivers and one of the hardest working celebrities in the world. This two interview compilation highlights Joan's unique gifts of humor and tenacity that have enabled her to achieve extraordinary professional success as a comedian, businesswoman and best-selling author. After a short break we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes the remarkable Joan Rivers to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. In our most recent interview with Joan Rivers, host Mickey Burns discusses her plastic surgery adventures along with the book she wrote on the subject titled Men Are Stupid and They Like Big Boobs. It's a guide to everything you always wanted to know about plastic surgery, a subject few people know more about than Joan. So let's join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes comedy superstar Joan Rivers to Profiles. Joan Rivers, welcome to our show, Profiles. It's a pleasure meeting you again. Again, again. And of course, uh, for those who might not know and li who live on Mars, you are a, a comic icon. But of late, you've been really very busy as an author. Yes. And, and they're both very interesting. The first book, the first book is titled Joan Rivers, Men Are Stupid and They Like Big Boobs. Right. A Woman's Guide to Beauty Through Plastic Surgery. It certainly is. And yes. when, when I read this, the first response was how the reaction was how did you come up with that name uh, I, I was very young I was in college and I was dating Marilyn Monroe's lawyer's son and we were invited to a dinner party and she was a very shy woman huh. and she chose to sit next to me for the evening because I think I was the least threatening of anybody in the room really and she sat with me the whole evening and talked to me uh -huh. and one of the things she said was don't ever forget Men are stupid and like big kids. <laughs> and I, I went, oh, okay. And uh, I always remember that. It became one of my stories. And when I went to uh, title the book, we thought that would be a funny title because it's about plastic surgery and doing what you want to do to your body. Well, now, as you mentioned, uh, the book is a guide to everything you always wanted to know about plastic surgery. Yes, absolutely. And in reading it, I, for our viewers, how did plastic surgery change your life and your career? I don't know because uh, I've done it that you wouldn't know what it would have been like if you didn't do it. Good do you, point. You know what I'm saying? Good um, point. It's made me, uh, certainly at this age, at this stage of my life, it's made me uh, happier to be me <laughs> okay. because I think for my age I look better and cleaner yep. than everything falling. Uh, so I guess it changed my life in that sense. Okay. It also got me on Nip Tuck. Sure did. It changed my life that way and it also got me this book. So it changed my life that way. It has. And interestingly, regarding plastic surgery, uh, I heard you uh, in, a, in a recent interview talking about, you know, that people in general will talk about everything, how much money they make, right. their sex lives, but they're very resistant to talk about A, yeah. their plastic surgery, and B, they're even more resistant to give up their doctors. Yes. Why so? Uh, it's a thing of people wanting to say I'm naturally beautiful. That's a very big <laughs> thing, and I don't get that. Yes. You know, all the, the movie stars uh, and the television stars will say, I've done nothing. Meanwhile, you know the doctor that did them. You know, because sure, I'm so sure. friendly with so many of these doctors, mm -hmm. and I'll know who did different people. And I just find that fascinating. It's the one thing they will not talk about. We, much has been written that you've had your eyes done, yeah. nose done, yeah. facelift, liposuction, mm -hmm. breast reduction. Uh, Botox, of course, tummy tuck. I had, a, I had a hysterectomy, and I was the only woman in the hospital. If they had to close me up, I said, I want a plastic surgeon to close me up. Yeah. And might as well give me a tummy tuck at the same time. Wow. And now a lot of women are doing that. Have all the procedures turned out the way you had hoped they would? To a point. Nothing uh, is going to change you. You are still going to look like you if it's a good doctor. <laughs> but I think that uh, the, the one I didn't like was the liposuction. I did it very early on. Yeah. And I didn't check the doctor out. I talk about that in the book. Yep. And. Uh, Check your doctors out. Check your doctors out. Go on the internet and find out who they are. And uh, I didn't like what he did, and I was right. He was not good. Now, how do you respond to women uh, who, who want to be loved for who they are 
as opposed to some artificially enhanced version of themselves. They're idiots, but if that's their wish, <laughs> they do it. Be loved anyone for If you think you're fabulous as you are, how lucky you are. Right. How great you right. are. Now, you recently said I've spent more time and very in very often, people that are real piggy think they're great, and that's great. Yeah, people's opinion of themselves yeah. isn't always right on. Yeah, they put down uh, that corn card when uh, <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah. laughs> Now, you recently said I've spent more time in operating rooms than most doctors. Yeah. Over the years, do you have any idea how much money you've invested in plastic surgery for your life? Uh, probably over all the years, everything I've done. Probably about seventy to eighty thousand dollars. Well, how, how many cars have you had? You know, there you it's go. a how much have you spent on drink? How much have you spent on booze? How much have you spent? I, I don't drink. I don't drug. Uh, my two passions are books, buying books, yeah. love to go to bookstores, and uh, plastic surgery. There you go. That's and there's the money a reason. Went. And there's a result. What advice might you have for those uh, who would like to have some plastic surgery but feel they can't afford it, especially in this economy? Well, of course, in this economy, yep. You, yep. You, then you do very little. You do what you can. You get Botox, which will right. take a lot of the wrinkles away. Right. It'll also pull the chin up. There are uh, lesser. Again, in the book, I go into the, all kinds of ways. Right. In the book, you mentioned coupons. Uh, coup <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No. I wouldn't go to that doctor. Yeah. Just give me out coupons. Yeah. Check them out. Check out. <laughs> now, granted, we're, we're in an in appearance-centered society. But is there anything, uh, do you believe, such as too much plastic surgery? Do you get to that point? I think that it's up to the individual. Again, uh, I don't tell you how to dress, and that's all part of do what you want. It's your body, it's your face, do what you want. If they want to do it and they want to look too much, that's their business. That's their Are business. they happy? If they're happy, that's all that That's all that counts. Now, your motto regarding plastic surgery, I'm sure you know it, but for our viewers, is better a new face coming out of an old car than an old, ca old face coming out of a new car. No question about it. <laughs> you can leave the car at the curb, but the face goes into the party with you. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, now, this year, we also have a second book. My other okay. book is right here. The Academy Awards, and it's gotten great reviews. It's a comic novel, well, mystery. Th this year, you're not going to be on the red carpet no. at the Oscars. Uh, which I, I don't know why that is. Can Nor do I. Go ahead. <laughs> I move, you move on to other things. Right, and what you did was write a book about the scene. Yeah, because nobody has ever from the inside really talked about what goes on on the red carpet, what goes on in the gift rooms, what right. goes on uh, uh, in the uh, very high-end uh, re rehab places. So I put all this into the book. Just the, the chapter that takes place in the uh, goodie bag room. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're like, going to read just really for that about, alone. Yeah, it's a great uh, Because so few people really do know what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. You do. Yeah. I've been there for 16 years. <laughs> right. Like many of these uh, celebrities look like they're running away from the cameras, but if you don't interview them, they'd be furious with you. Yes. Yes, exactly. That. Or many of them do not want to be interviewed and don't walk down the carpet. Then why are you there? Right. Because all the red carpet is is a giant photo opportunity. Yeah. So. Uh, I love when they walk in like this. Yeah. You know, there is a back door. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Go, it, it's all such a game. I, I have a couple of questions. We had emails tonight. People knew you were going to be coming oh, on great. our show. And two people, a friend from Staten Island, who's a big fan, wants to, wants to know, what do you attribute your enormous amount of energy to? Luck and vitamins. You, I have been a vitamin freak all my life. If you said to me tonight, oh, and I drink, you know, Joan, and I take a... Uh, an extra grapefruit every day. I'd go, I gotta get vitamin C grapefruit. You pill. try it. I do packets in the morning and packets at night of vitamins. Because your fans know uh, the true extent of your schedule. Yeah. Whatever vitamins, you can do. Vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. And I always say in coffee and M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> you exercise? And, yes. Okay, that helps yeah, a lot. Yeah, I exercise. Tony from Brooklyn, he wants to know, would you ever consider getting married again? And if so, uh, what would be the number one characteristic you would look for in a man? Bernie Madoff is my hero, and he's taken. Plus, <laughs> he's going to be away for a long time. He'll be very old when he gets out. <laughs> Only visits. I'm waiting for him. We can have conjugal visits. Right. I, and, 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 he's and, my ideal. Uh, very I good. I like a, a crook who's old. So Tony's out of luck from Brooklyn. <laughs> if Bernie goes, away. hey. <laughs> <laughs> How's Melissa and your grandson great. Cooper? They're great, and he's great. <laughs> good, good. They're both great. Best part of being a grandmother for you is what? Uh, that... He's a very cute kid, so he'll marry rich. 
And take care of Grammy. Very good. With everything you do, will there be more books for Always. Joan Rivers in the future? Always. This, uh, uh, the uh, this Men of Stupid Like Big Boobs with Plastic Surgery book, already there are so many things happening. It's a field that is just Bursting. Bursting at the seams. And you know, that's because, unfortunately, of wars. You know, the great plastic surgery um, always happens after war when they want to fix the soldiers up. So right. there's always, a, uh, after World War II, that's when it happened, after right. the Korean War. And now, unfortunately, uh, again, because we're having so many wounded, yep. that they're looking for things to make them look better if they come home. So that's going to do. And this is going to be Murder the Academy Awards. We wouldn't do not murder at the Grammys, murder at the... Oh, um, it's unlimited. Yeah, uh, unlimited. Yeah. Now, when you look back today, with all that you've accomplished, so, and you're in so many things, jewelry, uh, I can't even name them all, uh, what kind of career did you visualize for yourself back then? Writing. You I, wanted to I, be I a writer. I wanted to do writing uh, and do uh, comedy writing and straight writing, television plays, movies, yeah. And, 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 and you're writing. Everything comes back to the written word in our business. Comedy is, is written, but I also perform it. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you as, as just as driven today as you were when you were on Candid Camera? More. When you, when you were writing more for them? More because it's harder when you're older. It's another mountain to climb. I want to say one more time the name of the book. The first one is Joan Rivers, Men Are Stupid Because They Like Big Boobs, A Woman's Guide to through Beauty, beauty through, through Plastic Surgery. It's a long title. Full of great advice on how to get through it. With Valerie Frankel. And tell and us about the second book. The second book is called Murder at the Academy Awards, written with a wonderful uh, murder mystery writer, Gerald, Geraldine Farmer. Right. This is uh, from 20 years of experience behind the red carpet. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're still beautiful. Nice to Keep see up you. the good work. Thank Love you to talk to you again. It was my pleasure. Thank you for being with us Thank tonight. Thank you. In this next segment, we take a look back at a 2004 Profiles interview Mickey conducted with Joan. This time, she discusses her early beginnings and when she first realized she was funny. She also discusses her drive, her Tonight Show experience, and her family. Now back to Mickey Burns with Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers, welcome to our show Profiles. Glad to be here. And of course, for our viewers, they know you as comedian, best-selling author, Emmy Award-winning talk show host. <laughs> And much, much, much Drunk. more. And, uh, Drunk, and, alcoholic. And, and, I, and I should say uh, grandmother, of Four. which something that had, <laughs> of which you uh, have been keeping you busy of late, I understand. Yes. And she I, is annoying me all the time, wants to borrow money. Yeah, already? What does a three-year-old need a $100,000 loan for? I ask him. Now, he wants to improve the, uh, the nursery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or put a wing on it. Put a wing on the nursery. Uh, so I guess saying that you've had a busy and full career would be an understatement. Yeah, thank for God. You. And Knock on steel chair. Sure. And then, of course, in reading in some of your background material, you're a native of Brooklyn, New York. I wasn't yes. aware of that. Yes. And your parents were Russian immigrants. Yes. And when I was reading that, I was just wondering, uh, was it a good childhood for you growing up in New York City? Well, I had a great childhood. My dad was a doctor. And Brooklyn okay. uh, was, is a wonderful place, still is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. lived near the parks. So that was all great. And yes, my dad was funny, and no, my mother wasn't. But okay. I think comedy is inherited. <laughs> my sister is very funny. She's a lawyer, and I swear she wins the cases by making the juries laugh and the sure. judges laugh. Sure. And uh, besides being smart, I, I think it's I, my daughter's funny now. So I think it's oh, absolutely yeah. genetic. Passed down. At what point did you realize to say, you know, I think I'm, I can, I'm funny, and I think I can, I can make a career in this? Well, I knew I was funny by the time I was in the third grade, that I could make really? people laugh. Not class clown, but mm -hmm, witty. Mm -hmm. I knew I was verbally very funny, and that was great. And uh, I still don't know if I could make a career of it. It's a very <laughs> tough business. Well, but I made really, a long I guess, uh, 1970 was the first time I really made some money in the business. That I didn't have to sure. have two day jobs and night jobs and all that. Right, and, and I mean, in a way, you were a pioneer as a female stand-up comic because when you started, I don't believe there were many around. Well, there still really are. There are a few mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm. But in my day, uh, right before me, Phyllis Diller had certainly hit. And before yeah, was her, there was big. a woman named Tody Fields. She was great. She was great. Carol Burnett. Carol I believe Burnett she was, was out there at the time. She was already there when I, when I finally hit. Coming, uh, growing up in Brooklyn, you, were, you went to Barnard College yeah. and ended up Phi Beta Kappa. Yeah. Uh, and what I was surprised to read was that you studied anthropology. Anthropology. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It's fascinating. Yeah. It still fascinates me. Yeah. I, I get so, to go into an area 
Ephesus in Greece, and they dig down, you find an entire civilization, mm -hmm. and then you figure out what was happening there. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Had you not entered show business, would have you s stayed with anthro anthropology? My joke now is, <laughs> yes, if I could have brought along a hair and makeup girl. But uh, <laughs> I think I probably would have. Certainly uh, yeah. anthropology and, and philosophy. That was my minor. Once you, you Phi Beta Kappa graduated from Barnard, uh, came back to New York City, and you decided you were going to make your mark in show business as a stand-up comic? No, actress. As an actress. And I read somewhere, which I was surprised, and I think it's a good lesson for a lot of people watching tonight who think that it's easy to make it in show business. It's very hard, but I'll give, conversely, can I talk mm -hmm. about your Sure, talent? sure. This is the lucky part. If you've really got talent, every friend mm -hmm. of mine that really mm -hmm. had talent that didn't go into drugs or that didn't, that worked at it, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. made it a thing, Made it. Those that stuck with it. Stuck with it, but really worked at it. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to every audition, uh, tried to get into every play, made it. And those, uh, it's, it's amazing, no one got left behind. But then I was thinking, in, in, in 19, I, what was it, 1965, was that your big right. break on yeah. The Tonight Show? Yeah. That was like seven years after you start in show yeah. business. And, and I was wondering, I said, if Joan hadn't struggled and honed her craft in these clubs, uh, would have she been ready when she got her, her big break? No, and I think that's why. It's a wonderful question. You know. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Oh, good. So good Thank for you. you. <laughs> but uh, that's a very good question. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, people don't get it. Once you hit, that's when you start to work. Sure. If you're smart. Of course. And that's why you see so many kids with one records, you know, one record wonders, or whatever mm -hmm, they call them, mm -hmm. and so many people that will go into one sitcom and never heard of again. They don't get it. That's the time to get busy and say, okay, I'm lucky I made it this far. I'm going to make sure I have a, a solid base. And I, I really always have worked very hard at it. Were you surprised that when you first appeared on The Tonight Show that you were such a big hit? I couldn't put my thoughts around it. I got on The Tonight Show because <laughs> Bill Cosby was a friend of mine. Okay. And the night before he was on, and a comic that was mm -hmm, on that night mm -hmm. was so bad, Bill said to them, Joan couldn't be worse. Right. It was a literally a true story. Yeah. Nobody's wow. worse than that guy, so use her. Okay. And so I got on by mistake. And when I finally got on, I just knew I'm very lucky and I better go right and start writing my next shot immediately. Mm -hmm. And I never mm -hmm. stopped. I still do it. Sure. By 1983, you had become a regular host, co-host, Johnny's co-host. Yeah. And they were kind of grooming you for his right. replacement. Right. And I read somewhere that you had over, you know, pass an, uh, a list somehow of the 10 replacements, and your name was not on it. Yeah. And I was reading that, I'm saying, well, how could it not be on it? Because they were grooming you. No, they weren't grooming me. They were a bunch of, do, do you edit this? Yes. They're a bunch of fucking liars. Okay. What they were, they were not grooming me. They were yeah. never, and a friend of mine who was a VP at, mm -hmm. at N NBC sent me the list and said, mm -hmm. darling, you should know, I'll never forget, he wrote right across the top, darling, you should be aware of this and sent me the list. Right. And that was what made us move over to Fox because sure. you realize they yeah. would never use a woman in that spot. And, and never have. Amazing. And you became, it, the Joan Rivers show was then born around 1986. Somewhere and that in there. stayed on for a while. And then I was fired from Fox. Right. And then I went over and did my own show for 10 years, mm -hmm. 14 mm -hmm. Emmys later. Now, I know most of the viewers watching tonight will not be aware that you've been so diversified in your career. I was not aware. You've been well, a you don't wear jewelry. <laughs> you know, you don't I do, I do. You've been a comedian. Yes. You've been a best-selling author. Right. You design jewelry. Yes, major jewelry on QVC. You've been an actress, because I remember you in, uh, with uh, The Swimmer. Yeah, yeah. But I like Burt Lancaster, yeah, so I, I remember I, that movie. One of the meanest white men alive. Was he? Yeah, <laughs> I hate to break your heart. <laughs> but and, a very a wonderful actor. But you were an actress. You've been a screenwriter. Yeah. Director, yeah, talk show host, Anything. and a playwright. Yes, I, I have another play coming on Broadway in January, my fourth. And of all these different areas in show business, uh, so you know, multi-dimensional, was that your plan, or did it, was that did that evolve as the years went on? No, I had, I have no plan. No plan. I at still all. have. I, I look at people with great awe and admiration that have a plan, mm -hmm. if it works. But if you have sure. a plan and it doesn't work, then you're an idiot. Stop the plan. Right. I just, as I said, I'm hit and miss. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. show business, as you know, mm -hmm. is um, you have 30 balloons up in the air and you pray that one will come down sure. 
and be, be the lucky one. Uh, and of all the things I just mentioned, if you were only able to do one, what would that be? What pays the most. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope it would be something that you love the most, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> How much is my mantra? <laughs> no, uh, uh, I don't, I probably stand up. That would probably stand up because uh, being with a live, well, there's nothing like it. Sure. When you're writing in a room, you're writing in a room you're by yourself. Uh -huh. You don't know. <laughs> but when you're actually performing on a stage, mm -hmm. who the hell mm -hmm. knows? what someone's going to say in the audience that's going to snap something and you just go off into a whole sure. other tangent. So I love stand-up. Two people that should not be stopped in security. Two people, gay men and Jewish women. <laughs> gay men, I'm telling you, there is no way in hell a gay man can ever get a bomb in his luggage. There is no room. <laughs> Should I put the bomb in there, or should I take an extra sweater just in case I need somebody to... <laughs> and a Jewish woman, no Jewish woman is gonna ever put a bomb in a Gucci bag. Are you crazy? <laughs> and what if the bag blows up and I don't? I'm without a Gucci bag. <laughs> and I know you re performed in England recently. Yeah, the Theater Royale. Daughter, and, and, and at one of the theaters there, uh, I was reading that uh, you got the... the uh, First standing ovation in 14 years. Yeah, is that amazing? Which is quite a compliment. The English don't stand up, and I didn't know. You know, right, Americans, right. we stand up for anything. Yes. <laughs> Somebody walked on stage, they're going to die, you stand up. You know, they, they, we like to stand. We're emotional people. Sure. The English, and I Very was coming reserved. out and thinking, these are great shows, and what is this? And then they finally stood up, and I came up, and the stage manager said, my God, they haven't stood up in 14. Teen years right. in this theater, and I thought that that was that was a thriller. That was, thrill. that was, that was now all, all all the different venues that you've been, you've been involved in in show business. Is there one that uh, with all the accomplishments that you have? Is there one that you're most proud of, or you just you're happy for all the success? Anything, yeah. you know. The I, Emmy. The Emmy was great. Uh, I, I, I've gotten a Tony nomination, which is great because it was against uh, Diana Rigg, mm -hmm. Dame mm -hmm. Diana. <laughs> who did, it was Dame Diana and Medea or me playing Lenny Bruce's mother. Right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's, it's really just that I'm still around, mm -hmm. that I'm still um, getting great reviews, right. that I'm still viable, I think is, is my thing that I'm proud of. And you do look great. Well, thank you. Well, you look great. All things considered. How do you see yourself at this point in your career? Absolutely on target. Absolutely really? current, yeah. And I look at it and the audience is tremendously uh, young. Uh, I, guess. I, thought, I, thought, I was laughing, but you look at it in the audience and they're all young people. It's the older ones that get upset with me. It's the older ones that gasp. Sure. <gasps> right, right. What did she say? A lot of the, our viewers may not be aware that you actually started out as a writer and that yeah. you wrote on Candid Camera, wrote for Phyllis Diller, yeah. Zsa, Zsa, Gabor. And Zsa, Zsa Gabor. And when I read that, I said, I wonder if writing for others helped you in the beginning to be a better comedian? That's a very good question. Uh, Roddy Brothers uh, was wonderful because it takes you one step away. Yeah. And you could also see how they took a joke and improved it. Or made it worse. Or made it worse. And that was all, it was all learning process. What, what's, what, today, what's the best thing about being Joan Rivers today? Right now? Yeah. Sitting here and talking. It's a great, it's a great, it's, it's a great moment. Laughing with you, talking. After it's all said and done, what do you hope that being, you've been so diversified, what do you hope your show business legacy will be? Oh, the hottest chick alive. <laughs> <laughs> and at this day, let me tell you something, you, you are. Oh, she slept with them all. Oh. oh, I'm terrified of the dirty stories that will come out later. Well, I, I, did want, I did want to say there was, there was a, a quote uh, in, a, in a newspaper that said you are one of the uh, treasures uh, in, in New York comedy, and, and you are, and you're such a, a lady, and it was a pleasure having you. I had so much you. fun talking to you. Thank it, you so much. It was my so pleasure, much. Thank and, you. and we hope to see you again Thank real you. soon. And you're really, I'm not kidding, you're a fabulous interviewer. Very you, good John. questions. Well, coming from you, that means a lot. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. 
Today, in her 70s, Joan Rivers has absolutely no plans of slowing down. She recently displayed her savvy when she was crowned as Donald Trump's celebrity apprentice. Additionally, Joan continues to perform her stand-up comedy act to sold-out audiences worldwide, while appearing regularly on QVC to promote her latest jewelry creations. Well, that's about all the time we have left on this edition of Profiles. Until next time, I'm Marley Hall. Thanks for tuning in.